So today we're going to take a look at how the MacBook Pro 16-inch M1 Pro measures up to the desktop Ryzen CPUs and RTX cards. This is something I've wanted to measure for a long time and finally recently just got a chance to do this. So let's just dive in. First, let's go over the test setup. As already mentioned, we're going to measure the 16-inch MacBook Pro with an M1 Pro processor and 16 gigabytes of RAM. The desktop PC that we're comparing it against contains a Ryzen 5900X, 64 gigabytes of RAM, and an RTX 3070 Ti. We'll measure each of the following in Blender. M1 Pro CPU, M1 Pro GPU using Metal, Ryzen 5900X CPU alone, and NVIDIA RTX 3070 Ti using Optics. We've tested three Blender demo scenes all rendered at 2560 by 1440 using 400 samples. The video captures were done externally to ensure the rendering wasn't bogged down by recording on the same machine. Links to the demo scenes are given in the video description below. The first scene we'll be running comparisons with is The Junk Shot by Alex Trevino. I think this is probably the most popular demo scene available. On your top left, you'll see the M1 CPU. On your top right, you'll see the M1 GPU. The Ryzen 5900X is on your bottom left, and finally the RTX 3070 Ti is on your bottom right. Apologies for the weird color accuracy on the M1 captures. For some reason, the Mac just didn't want to play nice with my capture device. The playback here is sped up by 16x to give an idea of how each device progresses without sitting around for 15 to 20 minutes. Anyways, the playback lasts about a minute, so skip ahead a minute if you'd like to just see the results. We'll use the M1 GPU measurement as a baseline here. The M1 CPU takes about 110% more time to render, which is a huge improvement for the M1 GPU as the end user only has a choose to render with GPU in Blender. The Ryzen 5900X takes 27% more time to render than the M1 GPU, which in my opinion says a lot about the M1, when you consider the fact that the 5900X has a gigantic loud cooler on top of it, and the M1 fan barely kicks up during rendering. Finally, the RTX 30 Ti comes in at taking only 14% of the time to render the scene compared to the M1 GPU. Of course, the RTX card has a huge advantage here because it has cores dedicated to ray tracing. However, I don't recall optics being this good when I first got the card. In any case, impressive results from the 3070 Ti. Now we move on to our second scene, Party Tug 6AM by Ian Hubert. The playback here is sped up by 20x and lasts about a minute, similar to the junk shop. Again, we'll take a look at the results right after. For this scene, the results are less favorable for the M1 GPU. The M1 CPU takes an extra 50% of time to render this scene. This is a huge difference from the junk shop, which was at 110%. The 5900X is also basically equal to the M1 GPU in this case. And again, the 3070 Ti just smokes everything, rendering in just 10% of the time it took the M1 GPU to render. Our final scene here is the racing car scene by Pook Studio. Like Party Tug, playback is sped up by 20x. And again, we'll look at the results right after.
Here we see the results for this scene are more in line with the junk shop results. The M1 CPU takes an extra 105% of the M1 GPU time to complete the render. The 5900X takes an extra 23% of the M1 GPU time. Without surprise, the 3070 Ti again demolishes everything by taking 12% of the M1 GPU time. To close out this video, I think the M1 holds up extremely well, especially when you consider the form factor of a thin laptop versus a beefy desktop PC. At the same time though, the laptop itself costs 2500 USD. In any case, this isn't a review or anything like that, but I figured these were a couple important points to make. On one final note, a more apt comparison for a 3070 Ti would have been to run it using CUDA instead of optics. I plan to do another video comparing just the GPUs more in depth. Anyways, that's all I have for this video. Thanks for watching.